Ah, uh, yes, of course, it wouldn't be a near ending without a reading section, so let's do it. When Kaine's eyes flutter open, she sees a dozen villagers quizzically staring back. After a moment, she realises she's collapsed on the ground, where sharp stones dig at her flesh like... Whatever, that's not important right now. She pulls herself to a knee before rising on unsteady feet and sparing a glance at her surroundings. The fuck? she mutters. What happened? Wasn't I just fighting shades? Her mind raises as her hand gropes unconsciously for the blade that has been her constant companion for so very long. Though she can't explain it, it's clear she has somehow been transported to an entirely new world. So what now? Well, not entirely new. She recognises the hawk-shaped weather vane twisting slowly in the wind above her, as well as the small round homes with the wisps of smoke drifting into the air. And of course, there are the villagers currently staring at her with a mixture of fear and disgust. Oh yes, they're a familiar sight indeed. She is in the airy. She is home. Is something the matter, girl? Kaine spins around at the voice and sees a woman ravaged by time. Her narrow hips barely seem strong enough to hold her body upright, while the shawl wrapped around her thin frame appears ready to fall apart at any moment. Grandma? Is that really you? Her grandmother's eyes grow almost comically wide before blinking several times in succession. What's wrong, you fool girl? Is your head lost in dreams? Dreams? Could this be a dream? But it feels so real. But she's dead. Grandma's dead. I watched that goddamn shade kill her. So if this isn't a dream, how the hell is she here? Unless those shades killed me too. That must be it. I'm dead. I'm dead and this is he- Oh, stop with that nonsense already. Kaine flinches as her grandmother raises a hand in the air, expecting pain to come as correction for her foolishness. But instead of a blow, her grandmother simply places the hand upon her granddaughter's cheek. The warmth of it instantly spreads from her cheek to her face before filling her entire body with a kind of beautiful light. What's wrong, girl? asks her grandmother. Are you upset? Do you want to go home? Kaine feels tears come into her eyes and struggles to hold them back. Though she still has no idea what is happening, she knows one thing for certain. This is her grandmother. S sorry Grandma, not sure where my head was at there. Well, just make sure you keep it attached, her grandmother chuckles as she pulls her hand away. Maybe this is a dream, or maybe I'm already dead, I don't know. But either way, I'm not alone. As long as Grandma is with me, that's enough. Didn't I just tell you to stop spacing out, girl? Says her grandmother with a cackle. Here now, hold this. Here, now, hold this. She hands Kaine a large sack filled to bursting with all manner of fruits and vegetables. Damn, Grandma, this is a lot. Well, it's important to treat yourself now and again. Besides, these villagers may hate us, but the bastards are more than willing to take our money. We'll lend support as we can, even if they had to hold their noses while we do it. Her grandmother trails off as if trying to remember something, then slowly turns around. Well, what do you know? In all the excitement, I forgot to buy my medicine. A thin smile wavers on her face for a moment before vanishing into a lifetime's worth of crevices and wrinkles, causing Kaine to take a concerned step forward. No, Grandma, that's fine. You go home and rest. I'll get the medicine. Her grandmother hesitates, clearly trying to weigh her own need for rest against her granddaughter's odd behaviour of a moment before. Before she can start to argue, Kaine charges ahead, ignoring the small voice in her head that's telling her what a bad idea all of this is. Really, Grandma, it's fine. Go home. I've got this. She pulls her grandmother's ancient wallet from her fingers, an act that requires a surprising amount of strength. Besides, you know how stubborn I am. Once my mind is set, there's no changing it. Hmm, I wonder where you got that from. Seeing that further argument will be useless, her grandmother slowly turns and begins the long journey home. Kaine watches the figure recede from her vision, 
waiting for what seems an eternity to ensure everything is all right. Once the frail shadow finally vanishes over the horizon, she turns a heel and makes for the apothecary. Ho oh there, says the elderly apothecary as Kaine enters the store. Here for Carly's medicine, are you? Though few villagers had ever bothered to learn her grandmother's name, she and the apothecary were old friends. Perhaps that was the reason she'd always shown her kindness when so many others did not. Uh, yeah, if it's not a bother. The shopkeeper immediately sets about his work, deftly pulling bottles and herbs from the shelves and mixing them with a practiced hand. Soon, a peculiar smell begins to drift through the store, one that immediately reminds Kaine of her childhood. There you are, says the apothecary, as he holds out a small cloth bag. Sorry for the wait. Oh, and say, that's a fine portrait you drew of your grandmother. Looks just like her, so it does. Honestly, I've never seen Carly so over the moon about anything. She brags about it every time she stops by. You saw that, says Kaine, her eyes narrowing. Said portrait was something she had whipped up one day after getting her hands on some crayons, and to call it rough would be an act of purest generosity. The idea her grandmother was displaying it around town makes Kaine's stomach want to sink down to her feet before slinking off into a hole somewhere. You bet I saw it, the pleased apothecary says. She brought it all the way here just to show me. My, but it's been a long time since I've seen something so wonderful. Kaine's mind begins to whirl. The picture was shit. She was sure it was shit, and yet the man's reaction displayed the exact opposite opinion. Is he just being nice to me? The apothecary, as if sensing her skepticism, doubles down. I could really tell you put your heart into it. It was simply wonderful. Um, thanks, offered Kaine, who just wants the entire conversation to be over. She briefly considers how she's going to make her grandmother cease her little travelling art show, but then realises that train has likely left the station. Shaking her head to banish her increasingly shrill thoughts, she grips the bag of medicine tightly and turns to leave, but just as she reaches the door, she hears a loud thud from somewhere back in the shop. Kaine turns around to see the apothecary crouching on the floor. Uh, hey there, you okay? When the man does not reply, Kaine moves towards him. She assumes he just slipped on something, or perhaps hit his head on one of the low-hanging shelves in the crowded shop. But the moment she draws close to him, she hears him begin to scream inside her mind. My leg! My leg! My leg! My leg! Oh God, where is my leg? Panicked, Kaine looks down and discovers the man's leg is gone. Help me! screams a voice in her head. Help me! As Kaine looks on in horror, the man's fingers begin to shimmer and vanish. He reaches out for her with his other hand, only to find that it, too, is no longer there. Soon his arms go. Then his legs. Then the side of his face warbles out of existence, causing a stray eyeball to roll out of its socket and onto the floor. He says the voice, as if it could even be called that anymore. I can... A moment later, what remains of the pitiful shopkeeper collapses into a heap of ash, releasing a small puff into the suddenly silent air. Well, there's that music. As Kaine stumbles back in horror, she hears a cacophony of terror rising up outside. Oh God, what's happening? My arms, where are my arms? Why can't I see? Kaine bursts out of the store and finds herself in a nightmare. Homes slough off the sides of cliffs, taking out pieces of scaffolding as they fall. Screams echo out everywhere, creating an opera fit for hell. Villagers run in mad circles before exploding into dust, their clothes drifting this way and that as it floats untethered through the air. As she stares at the scene, wide-eyed, a single thought suddenly inserts itself into the forefront of her mind. Grandma! Kaine breaks into a run, the crumbling world around her suddenly forgotten. She leaps from one piece of falling debris to the next, using them as stepping stones to cross a world that is increasingly losing cohesion. As she continues her mad dash, flecks of ash are blown into her face. Her mouth, her eyes. Ash, 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 ash. Buildings and people, 
all reduced to so many cinders in the wind. Soon she arrives at her childhood home. It was once a place filled of precious memories, a place she regarded as an oasis in an increasingly mad world. But now, it is nothing but a pile of ash. As she gapes unbelievingly at the sight, a faint sound suddenly reaches her ears. Kai... Nay. She's alive! Grandma's alive! With a speed born out of panic, she leaps into the giant pile and begins shoving it aside. It stings her eyes and burns her lungs, but she continues on, heedless of the danger. Finally, she pulls a small, blackened form out of the darkness. Come on, come on, Grandma, she whispers. We're getting out of here. Without waiting for a response, Kaine gathers her grandmother in her arms and breaks into a mad run, hoping to escape the chaos. But the wave of ash has become a tsunami, and before she can make it more than a few desperate steps, it reaches out with a cruel hand and overwhelms them. Kaine stumbles and falls, sending her and her grandmother tumbling into the ashes. One glance at her feet is enough to reveal the culprit. Her right leg has vanished at a point just below the knee. Ugh, it'll take more than that to stop me, mutters Kaine as she slings her grandmother over her shoulder and begins to crawl away. We're going to make it. We're going to live. As she crawls, her grandmother seems to grow lighter, as if trying to magically reduce the weight of her own burden. And as Kaine continues to struggle, she hears a small, soft voice enter her ear. Th thank you, Kaine. Thank. As the voice drifted away, the last of the pile of ash that used to be her grandmother drifts away on a soft breeze. Kaine screams, an impossibly sad and lonely sound, and begins trying to pull the ashes back to her. This can't be happening. It can't be happening. But the ashes are mingling with all the other detritus from the collapsed village, and soon she can no longer tell which particles belong to who. Come on, come on, come the fuck on already! As she continues her frantic digging, her hand suddenly closes around a piece of soft, ragged fabric. Her grandmother's shawl. I knew this place was a lie. I knew it, and I still couldn't do anything. I couldn't save anyone. I couldn't even escape. I just felt peace in the place, and I accepted it. I wanted it. That's why there was nothing here. No reason to live. No goal. No anything. So this is why I'm... Say. Suddenly, a new voice enters Kaine's world. I say, can you hear me? After a moment, the voice calls out again, louder, clearer. Now then, you wish to get him back, hmm? Him, replied Kaine. Who are you talking about? Oh, for the love of all the heavens, I always did know you were a handful. Though the voice immediately begins to grate on Kaine's nerves, there is something else as well. A kind of warmth, almost a familiarity. Are you truly so daft that you have already forgotten one of your beloved travelling companions and friends? Says the voice, which causes something deep in Kaine's memories to surge forth. That's right. I had friends, and I was fighting to get one of them back. At this realisation, a blinding, radiant beam of light shoots out across the ash-covered world. Covering her eyes with one trembling hand, Kaine reaches for it. Do hurry back now, hussy. <laughs> and back we go once again. So I guess near is more her reason to live than the mill. I was going to say, are we going to get Grimoire Vice now to fight with us too? I've been missing that magic, man. Yes! What is the matter? Do you still not remember?
You have not time to become lost in your thoughts. Right. Okay. Let's get him back! Yes, I got a voice back. Oh, I'm gassed. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm super happy about that. The power of Grimoire Vice grants you the use of magic. Use my yes. magic. Yes. You fucking bet I'm going to use that magic, man. You fucking bet. Okay. The top of the beast. Tutorials. Right. Okay. Presume you know how to use magic, yes? And give us a show, hussy! I don't need your help to take out this goddamn fuck waffle! Fuck waffle. <laughs> oh god. Oh yeah, this is this is the good shit. Yeah, so now we can do this. It was weird, wasn't it, the first time it appeared. It's like, well, I've got no way to reach that. I was definitely not expecting this, though. Let's fuck it up good! <laughs> oh, Kaede, I'm happy to fuck anything up with you. <laughs> oh, when this game is good, it's so good. Okay, hold on. Let's let's wait for it. Right, not get too gassed here. Hey, Vice. Yes. Thanks. Have you been in your cups again? Fuck your face. Ah, that's more like it. Yeah, that's what I mean. For me, it's always when this game shines, man. That's what it's always done best. I'm going to get to enjoy it during battle as well. It's, that's the icing on the cake. A new sound of mind, Hussy. What you are attempting is extremely... Cram it, Book. I'm doing this. I see. Back to this again. Let not your resolution waver before mere illusions again, hussy. Don't worry. I'll do what needs to be done. At this stage, I'm done trying to question how things are working or what's happening mechanically. It's just like, just enjoy it. <laughs> Get it done. Back again. All right, here we go. Do not relent in your assault. Time to close this out. Should be able to finish it off now. Let us finish this. Yes. made up my mind. Nobody tells me what to do. I swore I would be a sword. I swore that I would be your sword. Do you hear me? So I am going to get you back 
and I don't care what it takes. Who the fuck do you think you are to just up and disappear like that, huh? I'm the one who gets to decide what my life means to me. It's my life, and I'll do whatever I want with it. So quit wasting time like a brainless fuckwit and get your ass back here now! <laughs> uh, shit. If that doesn't work, I don't know what will. Another reading section probably to come now. Hmm, there he is. I was thinking, is it like the boyhood form, but... Hmm. Do you want to recover the person you cherish? Yes, indeedy. If you choose this option, your current save data will be erased. And the save data and save data delete and ending D will be restored. Hmm. Okay. Uh. Well, okay. Hold on now. <laughs> I need to double check this because I use a different file name. Sorry, I use a different character name for the second run. But surely I still use the first one, right? I use my Burke file to do this. I'm going to check this just in case. There's no way I'm coming this far to get the name wrong. I'm 95% sure it's Burke, but I just want to double check. It doesn't even tell you. It just says it should take a couple of hours. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, I'm going to put this in. Correct name was entered. Yay! I remembered my name. All save files will be restored. Well, this is new. I mean, I didn't know that it could do this. I, I've heard of the whole Yoko Taro games deleting your save files, but I don't think I remember seeing a restored version. Well, this is interesting. I mean, Near Automata spoilers here. I'm going to annotate this, but in Near Automata, ending E was like really really made me feel so good it was like a really positive ending despite a really dark and sort of cruel game like a really tragic game at times but ending e the the story really ended on such a positive upswing and so maybe they've done the same thing again where ending e is going to be the the one where you get about as happy an ending as you can have with literally everyone coming back i don't know what's going to happen to vice but we saw Emil's back. We didn't really get an explanation of it. We have Kaine bringing Nia back. So that's at least those three. So let's see. I'm just a bit bummed I didn't get to see Yona. Like, was there a way back into the village before triggering this whole thing? Select a file to restore the lost save data to. I leave the rest to you, Hussey. Our journey may have been meaningless. Our past may have been a mistake. But we're not going back. Even if this world comes to an end, 
Because this... This is the world with the people we cherish. Wow, okay. That was a really interesting ending. So I guess that's like our, our ultimate ending E, the, the happiest ending. I mean, honestly, at this point, I'm not going to get into like how did that even happen and all that kind of stuff. Well, I'm just going to take it at face value and say whatever happened was that Kaine achieved what she wanted and she got someone she cherished and cared for very deeply back. And the three of them met together. It's a shame that Vice wasn't with them. I would have loved to have seen Vice somehow be shoehorned back in because like, it's that kind of ending where it's like, eh, you know, don't go too deep into the mechanics of how this happened. Just enjoy the fact that you can have your, your people back. So it would have been nice to have him there too, but I guess he's the only one missing from the crew. But there we go. After, a, I would say it's been like over 50 hours now of, uh, of playing, we finally have all of the endings. It's been it's been a hell of a journey indeed, and it's one of these where I think I'll I'll need to much like I did with Automata, I'll probably just sit down and just ramble on for like an hour about the stuff that I've been sort of thinking about as I've been playing, and so I'll probably leave that to like another video. I don't want to extend this one out too much, but I'm definitely glad I got to ending E. Uh, in general, it was fun to play. Um, it was nice that we got to play as Kaine and we got a few boss battles in. Um, the the Kaine uniting, reuniting with Emil was sort of it was it was awesome to obviously see, but it, I felt shortchanged by not having any kind of explanation about how it all happened or anything like that, which is a bit sad because I was kind of really excited and I wanted to know more. And um, but it was nice to see them reunited. And you could already see which way it was going once that happened, where he just appeared out of the blue. I was like, okay, I see what I see what they're doing here, and then of course, um, you know, we had the the moment where Vice comes back into the story, and they got to they got to fight together. So having them two sort of bantering and bouncing off each other while fighting was was epic. I mean, that was one of the the most fun things I, I've had for like the entire game. So we had, uh, of course, a reading section again for like 10, 15 minutes, which is something I'll definitely be talking about um, at the end, but. The story there was, uh, it was okay, it was pretty cool. But I think all in all, it was just nice. It's one of these where you you at least feel rewarded for, for all the effort that you put in because you get to have everybody back together. And you end on a, a much more positive and, and feel-good note because the, the previous endings, of course, ending A and B wasn't too bad, but C and D, of course, were rough. The only thing I'd say about ending E is that Yona's completely ignored. I really would have liked to have seen if I could go back to the village first, like is she even allowed back into the village to see Yona? Is that possible? Um, I don't know. It's something I'll probably, I'll probably have to look up. But the fact that ending E, like the ultimate finale of the game, is the final ending you can get. Uh, Yona's not seen in it at all. Even though, like, even Nier is back, but Yona's just sort of not even in the scene or anything like that. Unless there's some kind of post credit scene, which is then I'll take back what I said. But up until this point, Yona being a total non-factor, despite being Nia's entire motivation for the story, is an interesting choice at the moment. But I'm gonna wait until the end of these um, until the end of these credits just to see if there's gonna be anything there. But other than that, it was fun. I mean, getting to go into the Forest of Myth, actually fight something in the Forest of Myth, albeit for a short time. Being able to put it back onto hard mode was also good. I'm glad they let me save at the start of it so I could play it in hard difficulty and have a little bit of a, a challenge going on as well towards the end. It was fairly well balanced, I think, the hard mode in that. It wasn't too it wasn't too bad. I would have preferred not to die anyway, I think, for this one because I was so like um, intent on seeing what was at the end. If it was too hard, then like even if it was good hard, I think at this stage it would have been like, you know what, screw it, I'll, I'll drop it to normal <laughs> because I need to get to the end. But this game sort of hard difficulty being normal difficulty for the story most of the time, I think it worked well for it, for this particular section. But yeah, in terms of what we've seen for ending E, I don't really have too much more to add. Obviously, 
much stronger sort of machine digital automata kind of vibes and some of the stuff that they were talking about um, definitely seems to link into automata so i guess if you really get deep into the lore and that kind of stuff and maybe you play automata again and you really refresh yourself you'll be able to bridge a lot more mental gaps like for me because i played automata first and it, even now it's been over a year since i completed it and i played lots of other games and you know, lots of other stories and that kind of thing. My detailed knowledge about Automata and its timeline and everything is not that strong anymore. So I definitely need some refreshes to to put more things together in terms of the entire story. But let's see, is there a post credit scene? Surely we've got to see Yona. Surely. Okay. A parting greeting has been added to the options menu. Visit that woman's house to acquire a new weapon. What now? Okay, so now I guess that's the, <laughs> that immediately gave me Final Fantasy X vibes. That shot of all of their weapons in Zanakin. <laughs> so hold on. Uh, I pressed X by accident. Hold on. It's nice that they restored the the ending D save as well. A parting greeting. What is All this? All right. Is everybody here? Present and accounted for. You betcha. Sure. All right, then. <clears throat> Dear players, the game is over, and we have a special message for you. Thank, Thank you, you for, for playing. playing. <laughs> oh, for <fuck's> sake. <laughs> uh, Yona, why aren't you in bed? There you go. Oh, hey. It's my big, big brother. I'm so sorry. I just didn't want to miss this. Try and take it easy on her, okay? Yeah. You wouldn't turn down a request from your adorable little sister, would ya? Popola! Devola! You're here too? <laughs> Looks like you're having yourself a grand old time, sunshine! Okay, who was that? <sighs> Shut up, Tyrion. You'll just make things complicated. We haven't all the time in the world, hmm? Let us finish what we came here to do. So, it's really gonna be over, huh? Does that make anyone else feel sad? We have to say goodbye eventually. But hey, I'm sure we'll meet again. You really think so? I'm getting hungry over here. Wanna hurry this up? Alright. Once again, from the top. Dear players, the game is over, and we have a special message for you. Ready? Ready? One, two, thank, thank you for playing! playing. <laughs> That's pretty cute. I like that. I mean, the end credits of Nier Automata is one of the most incredible things I ever played. Um, so obviously compared to that, it's it's nothing. But I mean, it, it, was, it was cute, and it's nice that they had it. I guess I, I do want to check this new weapon before... I launch into I'll probably just like I'll start a new session just to sort of talk about the game and just ramble on about it for a while. Um is it better to do this or this? Let's do this. I just want to see the weapon at this stage, so I don't really care too much. But with this one, can I this was the the only save that I had before triggering off ending E. It was about an hour behind. So, let's just have a quick look. I mean, it says visit that woman's house. Surely they're talking about Kainé's grandma. Who the heck is that? Nice flowers. Those are Luna Tears. Legendary fl Your ki Hands off the flowers. Hmm. So I guess the final thing I want to see, that wasn't it. I just want to see if I can get to that weapon. Um, 
I think we can we can get uh, Devola and Popola to kind of send us back down, so they don't have to run all the way through. Such an ominous sight, and yet I find man the sheer the sheer amount of times we have been through this. <laughs> It's ridiculous. At this stage, the only thing left for me to do would be like other side quests, I guess, that I didn't do. The more sort of minor ones. And then to get every single weapon story. That's how I'd get the platinum, but screw that. Not going to happen. But I just want to see the new weapon. And we never got to find out how Emil got four arms, man. <laughs> I definitely wanted to know that. Poo -poo you. It can... uh, what the hell? Yeah, I think. Yes. Poo -poo, I am. Why did you. Uh, uh, how? Uh, I am. I. That you. You. Well then. It seems the way is open. Yeah, so in this particular situation, you meet. Um, Devil and Popol and you just tell them that you don't want to fight, I think, and they can send you back down. Popol hey, this is a even if you how did They're right, let's go back to the village. They're right. Do you true? Yeah, so this is like a fast travel. Yeah. It's kind of funny. <laughs> Successful test. Okay. So I said that woman's house. I'm going to try and get to the airy. And see what the deal is. And then I think one final thing before I go on the big sort of ramble at the end. We'll see if there's any documents worth reading as well. I mean, we get what the what the general premise of the Gestalt project is and what they're trying to do with it, but I still feel like putting together all of the pieces for it and like understanding all of the foundations of it and that kind of thing is not something that's very easy at this point for a lot of players, including me. So it's one of those things that I definitely benefit from just like having a, a read about. It's a nice long wiki wiki reading of the of the story again, so I, I know what I'm doing. So here's the weapon. Oh, come on, really? Can we? Is this Kaine's weapon? Yeah, Kaine's sword. And again, you probably get the the 999 damage. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You like that Kaine? Right, so let's have a look at the documents. If there's anything interesting here, I'll give that a quick read. If not, we'll move on. Yeah, there's nothing particularly good here. I mean, it's it's surprising that for a game that has so much to read, we ha we've I've literally spent probably three hours of this game reading. I would say maybe even more actually. It's been pretty ridiculous. I've, I don't think I've ever read so much text in a game before. Just like pure storytelling prose is, is very, very weird. Um, despite that, and despite how sort of complicated the Gestalt project is, and like how it how it was conceived, who is it conceived by, how is it designed to be run, how is it continued to be run um, after the humans are long gone, is it just Devola and Popola like in charge of the entire thing, how does that all work? They, she was the one that said, we gave Grimoire Vice a portion of our powers. So how were the books created and how did Dev and Pop have all this power? How did they give it? And all that kind of stuff. Like there's just there's a million and one things that we could talk about. And the fact that there's so few documents to support like some of these stories and like answer some of these questions is pretty surprising to me in a game that relies so much on reading to tell the story. So that's kinda of interesting. But I will return in another session where I can just sort of get comfortable and just ramble on about the things I want to talk about and anything else that springs to mind about this experience because it was more of a it was more of a mixed bag than Automata. Automata I just kind of wanted to take like a like an hour to mostly just praise it um, but for this one there's definitely been some very real things that have not been too great along with things that have been great so it's, it's more of a 
there's a lot to talk about. So I will get to that in the next video. So thank you to everybody that's been watching so far. I hope you've enjoyed seeing all the endings. Thank you for all of your patience in watching the series and the continued support. I hope it's been worth it as well for you guys that wouldn't have seen the endings before. And I'll be back with more soon to talk about my overall summary of my experience with Near Replicant version 1.22. So I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Take care.